Welcome to the Developing Dads podcast, episode number 81, on this fine Friday morning. Hope everyone's doing well. And I got a, a bit of a shock when Gordon started speaking. I think he could maybe do this, the sound effect live, I don't know. But he sounded like a, a 13-year-old kid that's um, not quite reached puberty yet. So Gordon, do you, do want, you want me to do it? Do you want, do you want me to do a, it, Neil? Yeah. So I, have, I have no idea what this sounds like, <laughs> but... We'll, we'll go with it. It's like a, some sort of weird sound effect that apparently my thing can do, but... We'll turn it off for now, shall we? Yeah, that's better. Anyway, um, yeah, we are the Developing Dads podcast. We're here to um, talk about all things dads. And in this episode, we're going to um, delve into the realms of routine, um, both from a father, kind of mum and dad point of view, but also how it helps kids. And I still find I've got a, an eight-year-old and two four-year-olds and... The eight-year-old still thrives on routine and still helps her. So yeah, we're just going to talk about the benefits and maybe some tips. So anyway, like we always do in this podcast, we're going to ask how each other are. Mr. Greenhorn, smiling away. How you doing? It's just, it's just because I think that every <laughs> every time you introduce the podcast, it's like, hello, everybody. <laughs> we're going to sit down and we're going to listen to the podcast and we're going to have a good time. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, how am I? How's things? Uh, I don't know how to describe this week, really. I, I don't feel like I've accomplished much. You know, it's kind of been a just uh, either been a bit lazy, or I don't. I don't really know how to describe it. Kind of, you know, quite negative things, I guess. But just not necessarily like fulfilling my potential. I think is probably a good way to think about it, because I've just been. Just floating, I guess, not really kind of doing anything. And I, you know, the I think the older me, the younger me would have definitely kind of beat myself up a lot more about it. But the older me is just kind of like, meh, you know, sometimes it's just the way it is, right? Like there's no, there's no tools that are going to fix it. There's no kind of like some hack, two minute rule or a routine that's going to fix it or whatever else. Um, but yeah, just a bit right flat this week. Right yeah, well. ride it a little bit. And I think as well on, I don't know what day it was. I think it was when, Wednesday, day on Friday. Wednesday had a, I won't go into like details of it, but I had a pretty heavy therapy session. And that was, that's kind of like lingered for a little while because it kind of sits in your mind and you think about it a lot. And, but then, but then there's kind of this weird thing where I had my hair cut just before this podcast. And there's something about like, there's something about a great haircut. What do you think, Neil? Oh, yeah, I fully agree. Even even a bad haircut feels good, but a great oh, haircut. Bad, no, but I don't like bad, no, I hate bad haircuts. Like, someone who is incompetent, lazy, and uh, undetail-oriented, the opposite of detail-oriented, whatever the hell that is. Yeah, I, yeah, I get it. Maybe I hate that. I, bad I just, the word, I just, wrong word. I, I hate it. I think it's just, it's lazy, like, basically anything to do with people who don't give a shit about what they do. Uh, but when when I meet a barber who gives a shit about what they do, I fucking love getting my hair cut. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just, I feel great coming out of it. I feel fresh. I feel kind of reinvigorated, all these kind of things. And there's, um, it's unfortunate that we live in Colston for barber shops because they're all kind of like just quite unskilled or very unskilled. Yeah, I know. You and, mean. you know, cool, it's, you know, 17 quid or whatever it is, 15 quid. But it's just, you know, journeymen, you know, just kind of dragging their heel type of people. And I hate that. And then there's this, uh, there's a couple of barbers that I use in London, but I have to go into London to get it. And it's obviously double the price. Uh, but there's one near London Bridge, this chap who cuts my hair. And I just love how detail oriented it is. He'll spend ages just making sure the fade is just like well done and just making it. It's just brilliant. I love it. Sorry, I've gone on about this. This should be about haircut podcast. This should be about routines. <laughs> I know you like. So you then get, that's you get the vibe that they're taking a lot of time and a lot of attention, and that does. That's all I want. Yeah, for half an hour, mate. That's all I want. Like I'll I'll spend I'll spend a lot of money for that for what it is. Yeah, because it makes me feel good. Like I used to go to um, what's it, Ruffians? Yeah, which is a Scot Scottish brand, I believe. And uh, I used to go to a guy called Tommy. It's just too far out of the way now. But every week, when I got back from holiday. When I got back from my holiday, got back from my travels, uh, I wanted a new hairstyle because I was also going bald. So then I just decided to go to this nice barber's. I went to the nice barber's. It cost quite a lot of money. It's like 40 quid or 45 quid a haircut. Um, but I'd get it once a month and it, I felt a million bucks. 
the guy had good chat. His name was Tommy. Got it all the way up to my wedding as well. You know, just before, like two days before the wedding, I had my haircut with him. I had, you, get, you got to have a beer, you had a coffee. You know, it's just, it was the best. And I absolutely loved it. And it's just a shame that it's too far out. Like, it's too far away now. It'd take me, it'd be a two hour round trip to go get my haircut, which is a bit <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I guess that's, that's spiced up the end of my, end of my week. And also today, being Friday the 30th of June, is my last day in my thir- early 30s, I guess. Yeah, 36, is it? Like, I'm in my late 30s tomorrow. 36, 37? 36. 36, Neil. Calm down. Yeah, 36. It's kind of a... It, it, like, the next one's in 37, right? And that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fully grown-ass adult, right? That's a... And you, it, I, what I also feel is this... this uh, odd sense of I'm starting to hit that kind of midlife peak. Yeah. You know, where, but then, but then, you know, I, we should actually have a podcast about it. I think is something about the idea of uh, getting older, I guess, as a dad. Um, but yeah, I'm hitting that kind of midlife peak thing where I'm like, what, what do 40 year olds do? <laughs> Cause they're not young anymore. You know, they've kind of experienced a lot. Uh, they're kind of in the middle ground of lots of bills and lots of debt. So what what do you what do you do? Um, because risk risk now is a, a genuine thing, and your body doesn't work quite as well. I don't know. I'll have to speak to some forty. We, we should interview some forty year olds and find out what do you do. What do you do when you turn forty? Like how does it feel compared to when you're twenty? Yeah, I do. I do wonder. Like when these guys wake up, do you get like that sense of like oh, fuck, I'm getting old, or things are not quite as easy rarely in our lives rarely ever in our lives just even just the two of us or even people are listening to this will there be anything that comes along that kind of kicks you in the teeth immediately yeah so it's a, it's a slow slow process and and you lose a tooth right you lose teeth because you don't brush them properly or you eat bad food yeah you know or they, they decay and that's the same as like your mind and your happiness and your health and all those other things like it's a it's a decaying process not not a sudden like jolt in something, generally speaking. So yeah, I don't think you ever wake up and go, fuck, I'm old. But you just kind of, I don't know. I like the fact that I'm turning 36 because it's just as a breadth of knowledge and experience that I have now that I couldn't have even imagined I had. or I, I, I had nowhere near what I had when I was, say, 26. And equally, I don't feel like I haven't given my life till now everything. Like I've, I've done, I've done, I've put out a shit ton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. It's kind of just interesting. Ter- and I, I don't know whether I do it consciously, but usually the day before some, something like a big event and it's usually like your birthday, right? Or when we, when I got married or those types of things, or even, even when I like, left school when I was 18, I, uh, I tend to have like a day where it's just, just me or I have moments that it's just me. And it's not with anyone else. And like today, going out my haircut, I had to go myself, I had my headphones on, whatever else. And I felt like that was quite, that's quite a nice time to just have a little reflect on stuff, which is kind of cool. I quite yeah. like doing this podcast as well, because it's kind of, now I'm meandering into thoughts, but I apologize. Therapy. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah, kind of an interesting week. Felt a bit lazy. Felt a bit flat. Felt like I was floating. Uh, tough session on Wednesday. And then just really excited tomorrow to celebrate with friends. Yeah, you know, barbecue. barbecue you? I've, yeah, have the family. I've got five kilos of be- uh, pork to cook off in the big green egg i'm gonna do some chicken wings i'm gonna do some uh cabbage caesar salad croutony sourdough toasty caesar thing uh i'm gonna do burgers sausages we've got beers we've got wine we've got booze just and then everybody's gonna be here nice and it's great fun I, but then i'm also i don't know how like how hardcore it's gonna be because some of my barbecues that you've been to they've been pretty boozy and pretty reasonable like they'll go on for a while yeah i think this might be but, one of the first i've missed oh. it's outrageous isn't it i know and you, you're off to beat your head I mean, <laughs> <laughs> for a wedding yeah anyway neil enough of my uh woes and happiness and sadness and whatever it, whatever my week's been uh how's how's yours been Are you, have we can we confirm the thing that's happened now or is that still you're still going through negotiations uh, well, I mean, it's been signed and sealed, but the rest of the company are not going to find out until mid-July in the quarterly. 
Okay, we'll, we'll hold off then. <laughs> um, of all the of all the colleagues that listen to this, <laughs> yeah, who knows? I think there's, I think there is one, one or two. Um, oh, well. Craig Craig also is, is um, admitted to listening to a couple of episodes. He's, it's it's maybe is it like title title dependent? Because <laughs> 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 I was thinking about for this one, I was thinking about you know, uh, no routine equals bad parent question mark. Yeah, yeah, that's quite good. Um, how's my week been? It's been really, really good. Um, just so I'm, I'm now off for two and a half weeks from work, which basically means I can put my office on, I can turn my work apps, uninstall them off my phone, and just like not worry about work at all. So this week has been busy of just like tidying up loose ends and making sure things are in place for while I'm away, which is nice. Um, and also I've been planning the two weeks, so I think I've worked out there's only kind of one day in between everything we're doing that we're at home. So yeah, we've got a really exciting two weeks coming up. Obviously a week of that is with you guys in Sky. Um, going down to London as well to see Simon Sinek and Steve Bartlett with you. And then we're back and then we'll do dad camp towards the end. So yeah, it's just been a busy time. Um, I think I think I haven't really had much time to kind of digest my thoughts and stuff, but I think I'm, I'm feeling all right. I think I'm, yeah. It's a pretty. It's pretty cool to have two and a half weeks off, and you just delete all your apps. I do. I do feel a sense of. Uh, it's. It's sad that I can't do that. To some extent. Yeah. But I guess there's a side effect. There's a side effect of doing your own thing. Like you what, get a bit more flexibility, expect? but yeah, I get. I feel two and a half weeks just of blackness of. Do you, work. Yeah. Do you, Do you think? Do you think you'd rather have two and a half weeks of, uh, out of office? Or would you rather the flexibility like me on a Tuesday morning I can go for brunch? Um, I, I'm in a bit, and you know this, I'm in a bit of a unique situation where I, I have a, a, quite a lot of flexibility, more than my friends, and I only work four days a week. I, I feel like I've got a great balance of like, I, I've got to work kind of between, I don't know, I've got to be available, have my phone on me or laptop near me between eight and six. Um but I could go for a morning brunch with a friend as long as I am available somewhere. Um, so yeah, I've kind of got the best of both worlds and I can fully turn off now. Although saying that, my boss, Lindsay, who never listens to the podcast, texted me this morning with four questions about work. <laughs> so like, I'm sure that will be it. She's very respectful in terms of my time. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. nice. It's nice just going, going black. Yeah, it is. But yeah, I think I'd, I need to try and carve it that way, but... Maybe I don't want to. That's why. Like, well, if, if, you, if you get a new requ- inquiry in and you leave it two and a half weeks, no one has to, like if it's a big job, like I don't know, Formula it's One. Not yeah, exactly. Like you're not going to miss and, that. And that's and that's it. Like my brain will probably turn to like ten percent yeah. or fifteen percent. Like whereas previously we still probably would have been closer to a hundred percent. Like even if I'd gone on holiday, my laptop still would have been there. I'd have done three or four hours in the morning, three or four hours in the evening. Like I still would have done a full day. Just would have spread out, spread out quite a lot. Yeah. But now um. Now I'm more comfortable because of the way I've set things up that I can literally take ten days off, and I'll maybe I'll maybe do an hour, yeah, like max, or I'll maybe not touch it for a day, um, which still feel which feels pretty pretty solid. Um, all right, sounds like a good week. Yeah, and uh, we've got lots planned for for next week, as you know. We, we do indeed. We're fit, often fitting some podcasts off to the Isle of Skye, which is. Uh, this has been a holiday that I've actually like. I think we started planning it last year. <laughs> Talking about and it, and yeah. it's yeah, but it's been a but it's been a holiday that's kind of this is this is our first. I think this is our first family holiday. As in me, me, you, and the yeah, yeah, like as brothers. Yeah, this is our this is our first family holiday. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I've I got this really cool quite... like diner style restaurant in Portree that I need to phone when they open at one o'clock. Um, it's got amazing reviews in TripAdvisor, but they do incredible seafood, which is like locally Maybe. caught, but it's like diner style. So it's not like you walk in, you're like, oh, this bit looks a bit weird, but the reviews are just phenomenal. Great. That's it's everything everything about that I like. <laughs> yeah. I'm up for it. Um, um, but yeah, we've been planning it for some time, so I'm, I'm super excited just because, yeah, it's our first family holiday with our own kids, me and you. Uh, other families are joining in, and it's just going to be like a big affair of pictures and drinks and memories and you know 
like I've just got idyllic views in my head. This is this is probably what 40, 40 year old people talk about. <laughs> is I've got idyllic views of just of uh, Isla and Olivia just holding hands walking along the beach. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Splashing in the water. Yeah, that's nuts, right? Because we yeah. we were we we we've, we've literally grown up together, and then now we're watching our kids grow up together. I know, I know. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a moment. Mm, it's fun. Makes me feel a bit teary. And yeah, we've got a cool location for a, a an episode, which I'm on a remote we do. island. I still need I still need to discuss with uh, David whether or not he wants to be part of that podcast. I'm assuming he, I'm assuming he wants to be, but I, I don't I don't feel like podcasting is something he's ever done <laughs> or <laughs> considered. So I'll uh, I'll propose it to him. I, I want to send him the questions, but it's just again I think the. I think the premise of this podcast overall is that, you know, we, we want to capture conversations, right? And, you know, David is, 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 plays a very significant role within my life, within certainly within Laura's life, and most definitely within Olivia's life. So, you know, m- morbidly, he's not going to be here forever. So why? Like, let's do it. Let's, yeah. let's do it. Let's do a pod. Let's talk about something. Um, yeah. Nice. Moving on to our, our topic of routine. Um, I think every every parent gets quite hung up on, or most parents get quite hung up on keeping routine and that bedtime kind of religious, darken the lights about six o'clock and get them ready for bed and quiet time so no TVs or no loud noises and yeah, follow that through. And we follow that similar routine, not quite to the T, um, with all our kids and they now sleep through They've slept through really well since kind of 18 months old. Um, Are you a routine person, Neil? Massively, yeah. I've, I've got to... Why? Why? I, I feel like it gives me control and it feels like I can achieve more in routine. So if I, if I haven't planned out my day or if I don't do a similar thing every morning and every night, then I just feel a bit bleh and a bit like, meh. I don't know, but I'm not. I'm not like religious, as in like we've got a wedding. This, we're away this weekend, so routine kind of goes out the window. In Sky, routine goes out the window because we've got lots of socialising stuff to do, and bedtimes are just non-existent. But I think when we're home, there's a, a, a big sense of like school. Every kids wake up about half six naturally. Um, they get their they get their clothes on as soon as they wake up, so they don't, they're not actually allowed to go downstairs to get breakfast until their school clothes and nursery clothes are on. Um, and that it just helps massively because they're all set. Like, yeah, as, as I say, they throw, they, they, we now don't have to ask them anymore. They lay their clothes out night before, ready to put on, and b- before they come out of the room, there it sounds like I I, I um, have a dicta- dictatorship in my house. But, um, but it is. You see, his parenting is a dictatorship. <laughs> like yeah. it's not. It's not. You know, the, the, Olivia has no idea how to express her emotions beyond let's just try and headbutt the floor. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. The, you know, you you learn you learn what an emotion is. You know that either either it be it subconsciously or consciously, you learn what sadness is. You learn what happiness is, and you learn what's a socially acceptable behavior to react in those situations. I guess. Yeah, like you know, you don't. You know, and I think you learn that from your parents teaching you how to do that and how other people teach you how to do it. But uh, so, do you? How how do you then leave? leave the door open for discovery and that's, that's a good question yeah. and it's and also things that come in left field and you're not expecting that ruin that routine um and that's something that's like really kind of i've struggled with and i i feel like i'm getting better to expect the unexpected and to just roll with it because especially when you have kids you just don't know what's going to happen I mean, we've got today planned out in terms of when I leave at one o'clock, when I start driving um, and get up to kind of Aberdeenshire, Pierhead, midday is the plan. But who knows what's going to happen on the way. Hopefully the kids will be at a nursery on time, get their lunch on time and I don't know, maybe one of them sick or like there's just so many things. And I think as a parent, if you can have an ideal plan in your head, but realise that the, the chances of it happening is probably quite slim. And if it does happen, then great. But that's taken me a long time. So yeah, routine... I would love every morning to be regimented, like I just mentioned. Um, I'd say 80% is, 20% is just like, a kid is sick. We've slept in. Yeah. But it's the classic, uh, no 
no war has ever been won without a plan. But no yeah. war has ever gone to plan. Yeah. Who, who said that? Do you remember? I, absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Just Gordon, Gordon heard Greenhorn, it 2023. <laughs> I've heard it before. It's not, it's definitely not me. But it's, but it's true. Like, I think, I think there is, I think parenting for me, or, or parenting has now taught me that even if I've constructed a routine or a plan in my head, it, it can go to that plan. And it likely, you know, there's there's a chance that it probably will. But I have to I have to leave some level of we're gonna be late. Or yeah. we might not even go. Yeah. Or yeah. we have to go home early. Or uh But then it but then sometimes I feel kind of there's kind of, I have a weird thing about routine where I will map out an idea in my head of how the day's gonna go. And then sometimes, you know, it kind of just shit happens and you can't do it. But then equally, I, I can leave the house with no changing bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I can leave and I'd be like, yeah, I'll just I'll figure it out. You know? Yeah. Or or if, for example, you know, we've had moments where Olivia's, you know, it's past her bedtime and she should be in bed when we've been doing something. And I'm just like, ah, it'd be fine. Like, we just, we just got to go on with it. Like, this is, this is life. So sometimes it stresses me out, sometimes it doesn't, which is kind of a weird place to be, I guess. Yeah, I think we probably both suffer from from that a little bit in terms of I, I want everything to be controlled and with kids you can't control everything. Um and that makes me a bit a bit nervous and a bit like, what's the repercussions of not doing this bedtime routine? Or what's the repercussions of them not waking up at a certain time or them not eating at a certain time? Certainly I was I used to get really the word's not anxious, but I don't know. Like, Does it, is it driven is it driven selfishly like you can you can be selfish is it driven selfishly because it affects your ability to stick to a routine or is it because they are not sticking to a routine so you understand the ramifications of what that like potentially might happen yeah i don't i don't think it's a selfish thing i think it's the the second one where i think something ne- negative will happen if they don't follow this routine so an example might be when the kids are starting learning to eat or they're a year old and they need to get like a set amount of food in before bed because they might wake up hungry or just that kind of thing. And if they don't, then they'll wake up. And I think that's shit. So it annoys me because. So you think it's you think it's it's you don't want the kid to be hungry rather than the kid wakes up and then wakes you up and then you have an issue. Yeah. Right. So I'm yeah. the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like I'm like no, I want to do this thing, and you're going to ruin it if you don't, if you don't follow the routine. <laughs> <laughs> which uh you know i'm sorry olivia if i've ever done that to you i apologize um but then you've also got yeah. to think like what's the worst that's going to happen so if they don't if they don't have that bath that night or if they don't go to bed at half half past seven then like we're, we're learning with isla now she's getting to the age of eight and a half as i mentioned at the start that her bedtime is now slipping into half eight nine o'clock that's a hard adjustment adjustment because that's like our sacred time of me and Rebecca used to do like date night things or watch a movie or whatever. And now like Isla's bleeding into that. So that's a hard one to kind of navigate of like routines got to change because kids grow up and kids get more mature and Isla prefers to have a longer lie now and go to bed later. And you just got to accept that. Are you telling me, Neil, that, you know, part of a routine helps you, uh, be more individual and not have to be a dad and not have to be a husband and not have to be you could just be Neil you know what I mean <laughs> yeah maybe maybe I think it's helpful yeah but I don't like interestingly if you think about your life and I'm interested to hear your thoughts of like routine when you're like early teens early 20s you didn't really have one I don't think like you don't really think of routine at all you just kind of meander through life but when you get to our age I don't know, I feel like routine's quite important with most aspects. I I wonder if it, I I do wonder if we're, we're looking at routine as like a schedule versus like there's, there's probably, there's probably some habits that we have that are routine, but we don't see them as ha- routine because they're just stuff that we do. You know, like we probably got up at the same, like we, we did have routine because we woke up at the same time to go to school. We had to catch yeah, the bus. Yeah, true, true. We, we listened to our loud music at a certain time in the morning. Right, we probably ate the same breakfast every morning. We probably ate very similar lunch every single day. Yeah. Probably ate very similar dinners most weeks. You know, so there was probably just less of an onus on time because because you're you're young. 
Yeah, like, yeah. Time, time, like time isn't a thing. Parents right? do that. <laughs> yeah, you, you talk about time isn't really a thing. Like you only really start to understand time when you go to school because you have to turn up at a certain thing and then you finish at a certain time. And then you have to be at certain classes and things. But beyond that, like even even like beyond that, the the time you spent on the earth is so small compared to the actual time you're going to spend on the earth that you just take it for granted. And so then you don't really create routine because you're not trying to maximize anything. You're just yeah. literally living and you're living and feeling and being. But as soon as you start to go older, you recognize the value of time because there's less of it. And there's probably an unconscious aspect of like the internal clock of death yeah. where you're perhaps approaching it some like at some speed because the older you get as well, like time, fl like fucking we're in the end of June. Yeah, I know. What July the, what the, what the, what the, <laughs> what the France? I'm waking up tomorrow. I'm 36. <laughs> what, what, you know, and it's, and it speeds up. So I think you then just become much more aware that routine helps you apply productivity. And with that productivity, you're able to do more stuff or experience more things. So I think routine, routine then, especially with children, and I find this with children, you know, I'm self-employed. And if I know when Olivia is going to probably wake up, if I know when Olivia goes down for a nap, if I know when she is going to bed, it's much easier for me to plan in between those times or during those times to do some work or earn some money or, you know, uh, have some downtime or just, just basically plan my life. Uh, because she is the priority when ultimately when she wakes up or when she's running around, right? So I think that's where routine for me plays such a big role and it allows me to be more productive, to do my job, do my work uh, and experience things. I'll be back in a minute. This, the camera's gone off. Excellent. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I know what you mean. And it's, it's an interesting point that you said about the, yeah, you kind of get into routine to maximise the time. And I feel like that's why we have a, such a set routine for waking up in the morning, getting ready for school and because it, it helps and it means we're out the door on time and we're not, we're no, nobody's stressing in, in, our, in our house in the mornings. Um, but you see some, some of our neighbours around here, um, who definitely listen to the podcast, but you, you see them like, <laughs> r like I've dropped my kids off at school and they're literally running out the door one minute till the bell goes. Like every, like 99% of the time they do that. And I, I'm just like, why? Why? <laughs> My kids are all all dressed and, and ready by seven o'clock. I mean, there's definitely a superior complex you're, you've got with that. Like, look at my children, they're all lined up, you know, like the Von Trapps, you know, all singing and skipping to school, standing, waiting for their teacher. Yeah, don't, um, don't get me wrong. There, there's sometimes shouting, sometimes tears in the morning. But yeah, most of the time we get out in time and it's, it's all about yeah maximising. Because there's that, there's that difficult, that difficult thing that I kind of, I guess, balance between i know i know what routine can do for success like i did bodybuilding right you know yeah. i have to i have to turn up to the gym in the morning do my cardio i have to make sure all my food is prepped and eat it at certain times and then i have to train at a certain time and do certain amount of reps and certain exercises i have to do all the time and i have to repeat that process over a long period like that's 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 the basically routine in a nutshell right? yeah yeah and i know the success that comes from it but then equally like creativity and serendipity and uh, like, like even, even routines in relationships, like date nights, for example, like scheduling your relationship, part of me feels really gross about that. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you don't. Spontaneity like, goes out the window. Lo yeah. Love doesn't happen in, in, in a formula. It's not, it's not mathematics. You know, it happens in this kind of like weird, like middle ground of, a commitment and like s biology stuff, like energy and Hormones. all this kind of weird crap, right? And that only happens when you're kind of, you're free and spontaneous a little bit, you know, because there's probably memories in your head of some of the best times you've had with Rebecca have not necessarily been things that have been, you know, at 7.30 a.m. We are waking yeah. up and we yeah. are going, <laughs> we're going here and we're going to have these foods at <laughs> this time do you know it's kind of you just there, there's a, an art of discovery um would you say you and laura have a same appetite for routine yes 
That's, that, yeah, that's helpful. Out. But it's it, it's interesting. It, it's helpful, yeah, definitely. Like, I don't think I could live with someone who's not organized. And in fact, I think probably being more organized than me from a routine perspective. And she's really done very well at breeding into Olivia this this kind of like sleep routine and the food routine. And, and it's so easy for me now, being someone who is just inept at emotions at times, to understand like what's wrong with Olivia. Because it's like, it's nearly 12 o'clock. She's been a bit grumpy and a bit funny. Probably hungry. <laughs> or it's approaching, yeah. approaching nap time, right? <laughs> yeah. So it, she's amazing at that. But then equally, like, I think sometimes I offer this I, this thing where, you know, oh, we need to be home at this time. And I'll be like, why? Oh, because because of this. Eh, does it matter? Like, if if it's not to the exact, like, half an hour or an hour, does it, does it matter too much? And is the stress too too much if we don't stick to routine? So I think there's a level of balance with that where we kind of, I like routine, it's helpful, but at the same time, perhaps recognize outside of when we're probably being too embroiled in routine. And it's probably at this moment, because I remember we actually, um, we were at Disneyland in Florida. No, we weren't. We were in Disneyland in LA. And uh, it was pushing like 9 p.m. Right, and we're still wandering around because we were meeting up with friends. We're still wandering around, and it's a nine p.m. It's Olivia. It's nine p.m. Olivia's still awake. This is this is this is territory we've never been in. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know what this child is going. How this child is going to happen? React. What happens at half past nine? Does she turn into a werewolf? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No idea. But it was fine. Yeah. And I think I know Laura was panicking a little bit because she's obviously worried about Olivia, just you know, getting grumpy and tired and being upset. But there was part of me, I was just like, it's fine. We'll just, let's, de- let's deal with it. Like, this is a moment that we're not going to have, probably again. Yeah. Let's, let's enjoy it. Let's just, let's just let it happen. And if bad things happen, bad things happen. Fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I would say I'm probably more of, of, of Laura's side is like, I wouldn't say I stress about routine, but I definitely try and stick to it as much as possible. Um, so what you're saying is I... You you married me and I married you. <laughs> someone, someone, in our respective like partners. <laughs> someone like that. Um, but then, like, when you, like, I also have come to the realization that Isla's now getting older, so her bedtime's going to be later. And I accept that every night that she might come down and say, can't sleep. Um, that's okay. She can watch TV with us. Rebecca, on the other hand, is like, no, this, this annoys me. Like, she's not following routine. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely differences. Um, but on a whole, and I think you, you hit the nail on the head with like, I don't think I could live with someone or be with somebody who didn't find routine important. Like you hear about some people, like we've got a lot of friends and they manage fine. But um, for example, if, if we say we're going to meet at a park at nine o'clock, they're likely going to be like 45 minutes to an hour late because they just can't do mornings. And <laughs> yeah, like it's just differences. But both of them are like that and both of them accept that. I've just got, I've got like that. That is, like, <laughs> um, if 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 ever these types of people turn around and go, I don't know what's wrong with my life. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not happy. Yeah. Like, you can control getting out of the house. Like, you can. Yeah. Like, you can do it. Okay. Yeah, I get that. Um, but yeah, like th- th- that works for them. But I, 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 as I say, I don't think I could live with somebody that's that doesn't have that kind of ingrained in them. But then, but then I think these types of people sometimes uh, will will argue that you know sometimes just letting it happen, let nature take its course, you know, let these things kind of just be, is the best way to raise kids. Like just yeah. let you know, just just let them be nature, right? Or let nature like let their let their kind of little circadian rhythm clocks in their brain let them go to sleep and wake them up. That's bollocks. <laughs> yeah, there's this program on Channel 4 a few years ago now where it's like no rule parents. And these kids just got away with everything, like cutting their own hair and not going to school, going to school if they wanted, waking up when they wanted. There was just no ramifications. And that's just that's just too far extreme. It doesn't. I mean, I don't, I don't know the general psychology of it all, but, you know, there's, there's kind of, I don't think it's unreasonable to have rules. Yeah, but I, I think. Have guidelines. You mentioned near the start of the podcast where like routine breeds success. I think like, I think it does. I think yeah, I, I do think it does as well. 
I think if you look at most successful people, they've got some form of routine. I mean, you hear it on social media, which is a lot of bollocks, like wake up at four, Jeff Bezos wakes up at four in the morning, goes for a run, does some journaling. Does he? Who knows? But yeah, maybe not Who that. Who cares? Sh- like you can, you can have any, you can have any, literally any routine you like. Yeah. You know, you can get up at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. But it, but there's there's still a routine in it, right? There's still something that you're 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 doing, um, or you're you're kind of like sticking to when when I do this, I do this. When I'm here, when I do this, I do that. Blah blah blah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of because it, for example, like Olivia's circadian rhythm, right? I have no idea what it is. We could probably work it out. Is she a night owl? Is she a morning whatever? But we've literally like the routine now is. We turn the lights off. We shut the shut the curtains before she goes to sleep. It's always around about the same time. It's a very similar routine. Like touch wood. Her her sleep routine is fantastic. Like she gets up some mornings a bit early, but probably because it's quite bright outside at times. And even if we have a, a black thing, uh, you know, a black shade or whatever it is, to yeah. Cover, yeah, it still doesn't quite work. But at the same, like she she'll go to sleep seven o'clock. Like we put her down just straight to sleep. Yeah, like she knows, like when we do the book, we do the bottle, and then I pick her up and I cuddle her. She cuddles me like she's she's about to go to sleep, like she's she's automatically gone into this kind of process. Yeah, because we've done it so much, so it's like fuck the nature. <laughs> like <laughs> I've nurtured, we, like Laura's nurtured her into the programming her into the times that she goes to sleep, and I don't see why there's any other part of that doesn't play a role within like eating and mood and. Yeah, just how does that breed into you as being an adult? Well, you know, you have to get up at a certain time. Yeah, we've got a job to go to. Go do the task. Yeah, do the stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or, yeah, you, you can control your emotions more. Blah blah blah. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of my thought, I guess, on that sleep oh, thing. Yeah, I wonder how parents that I don't know work shifts and they're 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 just random hours and random days and like how how they manage routine with with sleeping kids. I think we're we're maybe quite fortunate that we we have pretty set routines at work so we can plan our routine in our personal life but i think there's probably parents out there that have random shifts doctors nurses yeah that's that's brutal yeah and it's hard. night shifts i, I do wonder I, I do wonder if there's like a, a a shift like is there a is there a uh, movement or is there movement in like life expectancy like if you have a routine do you yeah. have a, do you live a longer life there's a massive because one in like if you're a night shift worker that takes yeah there is off. there is that but that you know you can have that routine right you could still do night shift for the rest of your life yeah but i guess it's more because because if 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 routine if routine if routinely you go for a walk or are active you're less like you're you're you've got a lower mortality rate yeah in the population if you are more sociable if you're routinely more sociable you lower your mortality rate you know, like these these are things that if you meet up with a friend once a week or once a month, that's a routine. Yeah. So, you know, do people who lack that level of routine, that level of being able to go, hey, do you want to meet up for a coffee? Do you want to meet up for uh, lunch or routinely go out for a walk for lunch or for the morning or in the evening? Like, it feels like that's why I'm saying like routine breeds success because you, I feel like if you've got that type of thing where you're routinely doing stuff, then it potentially provides health, which then ultimately means you live longer. Maybe. I don't know. I'm meandering on the idea of routine. I think there's definitely something to say that, yeah, if you don't have a, yeah, if you don't have a set routine, then it's a big assumption that it takes years off your life, but you can see why it might. There is a bit of a, is it a bit of toxic productivity though, isn't there? Like there is the the status kind of, uh, you know, posturizing of, I get up, like you said, Jeff Bevo was the 4am sort of thing. Yeah. And I, I also think that I also think that level of routine is bollocks. And I also think looking at other people's morning routines, although interesting, and I do find them fascinating. Yeah. But I also find them bollocks. Yeah. I I I, I, I honestly I, I can I, I want us to go for a swim in the sea in the morning. I want us to go for a cold dip somewhere in sky just for the bands. But I find it utterly wank when people <laughs> post every morning on social media going, Let's get cold. Yeah. You know, yeah, and jump and jump into the cold plunge thing, like some sort of narcissistic, you know, superiority complex dickhead. There's a couple say of you mean it, Gordon. Say, <laughs> say, 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 how you, say how you see it. 
I'd love to take you into yeah. the sea one morning. See how you feel. Yeah, I'd be up, I'd be up for that because it's just something I've never done. But it's not something I'd want to put as part of my routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fuck that. <laughs> but then equally, I I see getting up in the morning and using your phone first thing and scrolling through Instagram or whatever else also is toxic. So just because you know there are two ends of the extremes. Yeah. There is the posturing of you know let's get cold versus you know scrolling on Instagram. I'd like to be in the middle somewhere where I don't do either of those things. Yeah. And I wake up and I I uh, I greet the day with my daughter and my wife. That's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, wholesome. You do you want to keep going with the pod or you uh, you need to get off? I kind of need to get off. It's been a busy oh. busy day. You want to hear what I've done today, Gordon? Can I enlighten all my all the I don't I don't one, care. one and a half listeners. <laughs> But Our listenership's doing pretty well. I mean, we're we're kind of in the mid mid to late thirties now. Like it's it's actually it seems like it's growing, <laughs> but it's probably not. I mean, you know, I was looking. Didn't listen to us. Yeah, so Spotify in the last episode, I looked at the re- reviews and we had like nine or ten. On um, Apple Podcasts, we've got similar, like I think eleven or twelve five stars. So yeah, we're getting well, we're, we're getting sort of anyway. Yeah, it's been a busy day, and I still need to. We're finished packing, but we need to make some lunches for the kids, and we're away to yeah drive tried to peter heed so it'd be nice to end the podcast we've done we've done 40 minutes which is kind of our maybe a bit less than average but it's been a good pod thanks for listening everyone i've been slacking on the old um reels this week but i'll get back into routine and we've got some exciting podcasts coming up filmed from the isle of sky i really want to do one from a canoe um on a nice i'm not convinced but okay well you'll see how calm the water is there's no waves it's just like a still body of water so but why like it's a podcast neil people listen to it they don't watch it you, you'll hear all the kind of the the water in the background and <sighs> like if i don't birds. come back alive i'm <laughs> i've been dr- I've drowned filming a podcast on a can- <laughs> canadian canoe we've also got one in a in a remote distillery um if you want to tune into that one anyway thanks for listening you can find us on apple podcast spotify all that good stuff instagram developing dads L- leave us a cheeky five stars and until next time Thank you. Bye.